Are you suffering from fatigue, brain fog, weakness, or anxiety, and your doctor can't find a reason for it? If so, you may be suffering from a hidden iron deficiency. What? Wouldn't that show up in my hemoglobin and my CBC? No, it may not. And today I want to show you a case of a 39-year-old male with a recent ulcerative colitis flare in my office where just this happened. Now your doctor will miss it and you'll suffer at least four months too long until it shows up on your CBC. But with simple and inexpensive testing, we can find it today. The reason your doctor won't find it today is because this simple, inexpensive test is not standard of care in conventional medicine. What is that test? Keep watching to find out. I'm Dr. John Bartimus, and I'm putting the pieces together to help you live a life at Optimal. Let's use the labs from a 39-year-old male with an ulcerative colitis flare in my practice. Now ulcerative colitis is an inflammatory bowel disease as is Crohn's disease and celiac disease. So if you've got one of these diseases, a GI bleed is a common component of them and when you bleed you lose iron and so if you've got a hidden bleed, it could also be an ulcer or a bleeding polyp or other things, then you lose iron and you may manifest symptoms such as fatigue, brain fog, weakness, anxiety, etc. So I want to show you his labs and show you how your doctor could miss it and leave you suffering for four months too long or longer before it's found. So in a conventional medical doctor's office, the standard of care blood work wise when you get your yearly physical is for them to run what's called a CBC. And that stands for complete blood count. And on the CBC, it's looking at your white blood cells, your red blood cells, your platelets, and other markers. Well, on that test, the hemoglobin is the most sensitive marker for iron status that conventional medicine runs. So on that test, hemoglobin is the most sensitive or best marker for your iron status, but it's not the best marker for your iron status that you could possibly run. The best test to run to know what your iron levels are is an iron panel. Surprise, right? But conventional medicine doesn't do that standard, so some patients are failed. This patient is one of them. So how do you diagnose iron deficiency on a CBC and or anemia or iron deficiency anemia? And one key point for you to understand, dear watcher, is that you can be iron deficient and not have anemia and you can have anemia and not be iron deficient. Okay, there is iron deficiency without iron deficiency anemia and there is anemia without iron deficiency, meaning there's multiple different forms of anemia. Iron deficiency is one of them. So you don't want to hear anemia and say, oh, I need to go take iron because you may have an anemia that isn't due to iron deficiency. So that's just an extra pearl for you, a sidebar. That doesn't have to do with today's case. Today's case is a straight iron deficiency without anemia because the CBC is normal. So let's dive in so you understand that. Now on the CBC, there are markers called red blood cell, hemoglobin, hematocrit, MCV, MCH, and MCHC. Now these markers are gonna be on every CBC that is run. And these three, the red blood cell, hemoglobin, hematocrit, are looking at your red blood cells, uh, their level of, iron, of the iron carrying protein hemoglobin, as well as how densely packed they are in your plasma. And so if you've got all three of these lab low, then that is diagnostic for anemia. If you've only got two of the three lab low, your doctor will not diagnose anemia because technically it doesn't fit criteria but probably you're headed that way, so you don't necessarily have to wait till it's diagnosable to take action, at least from a functional medicine standpoint. We want to take action early, right? So you don't get to anemia. But anyway, so that's how you diagnose anemia. Now once the anemia is diagnosed, you use the MC series to figure out what type of anemia it is. If these go lab high, all three of them, that could be a pernicious anemia and related to B vitamin issues. If they all three go lab low, that's an iron deficiency anemia. 
And if they all three are normal with these three lab low, then that's a normocytic anemia and there's multiple reasons for that that you need to dive deeper into. So in this patient's case, he does not have lab low levels of any of these. Okay, his, his levels all fit optimal actually from even my standard. So his red blood cells were 5.2, uh, 42, excuse me. His hemoglobin was 15.1. That's pretty much dead center range would be optimal. His hematocrit was 46. So those are all normal looking. His MCV was 86. His MCH was uh, 27.9 and his MCHC was 32.3. So all of those numbers fall into the normal range on the CBC. If you look over to the right on your lab result, it'll say reference range or normal range and give you the normal ranges. If you checked, all of these fit into the normal range for this patient. So if he were suspecting iron deficiency or his medical doctor was and they only ran the CBC, they'd tell them, hey, you don't have an iron deficiency, you don't have an anemia, you're normal. And so if the patient is walking in telling the doctor, hey, I think I'm having a flare, and the doctor is basing the flare on whether or not this shows up abnormal, the doctor would say, hey patient, you're not having a flare per the labs, your hemoglobin's optimal, so your iron's fine, the patient could be sent away and continue to suffer for months before it shows up. Why months? <clears throat> well, because a red blood cell has a 120 day lifespan. 120 days is four months, okay? So if you've got an iron deficiency, that could take time to show up in your red blood cells because today, right, or the day before you had the iron deficiency, you had normal red blood cells. Now you have an iron deficiency and that lack of iron could show four months to show up in your new red blood cells, right? Because it'll take time to get rid of your healthy current red blood cells and replace them with unhealthy iron deficient red blood cells. So that can take four months. That's why you could suffer for four months before it's found because of the lifespan of a red blood cell. So how could we prevent that? How could we figure it out today? We could do that. We could find the iron deficiency today by running a very inexpensive, less than $30 test called an iron panel. It's very easy, you can do it through LabCorp, Quest, anybody, all right? And so that iron panel will have three to five markers on it depending on the test, but the three that we really care about are serum iron, iron saturation, and ferritin. So I like to communicate these as Ferritin is the best indicator of stored iron in your liver. So I look at that as your iron savings account. Serum iron is the iron that's in your blood to be used in real time. So there's your iron cash flow, what's in your wallet to be used in real time. And when your wallet gets low, you can debit from your savings account to fill it back up, right? Until your savings account is zeroed out. And then the iron saturation is how saturated is your blood with iron, okay? so. My patient's numbers, his serum iron was 43 micrograms per deciliter. That's too low. His iron saturation was 8%. That's too low. 15 is the bottom end of normal range. So he's, you know, way too low there. And his ferritin was uh, 15 nanograms per milliliter. And 30 is the bottom end on that range. So this patient is iron deficient based on the best possible marker or panel you could run to investigate that called the iron panel. So again, notice he's iron deficient, but his hemoglobin hasn't showed, shown it yet, right? And if that's the marker that medicine's using to say your iron's good or not, you're going to be suffering for four months while you're waiting for the red blood cells to turn over and, and show the deficiency. So four more months of fatigue or brain fog or anxiety or weakness, that's no fun. For less than $30 today, you can discover it and start taking action. So this is really important because again, it's an example of standard of care possibly failing the patient. 
and the medical model not going above standard or running medically unnecessary testing to do better by the patient and investigate it further today. In functional medicine, we want to investigate it further today. We want to stop the issue today and get you back to a life at optimal as quickly as possible. If this is something you're interested in, reach out at functionalmedicinecharlotte.com and we can schedule a 15 minute complimentary consultation to discuss your case and figure out if we would be a good partnership together. So thank you for watching. Share this with all those who need it. Comment below and have a great day.